Google business page, Google Maps, SEO. Who do I go to? Listen to this and hear my guy. Welcome to another episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Berg. I'm a speaker, author, sales trainer, website reviewer, and I help businesses like yours sell more, profit more, and have more fun doing it. Enjoy this episode. Hi, it's Alan Berg. Welcome back to another episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. I am so happy to have my good friend back on, Brian Lawrence. Brian, how are you doing today? Doing great. Looking forward to sharing some good stuff. Yeah, last time we were talking, we kind of teased this because we talked about getting your website ready for engagement season. And as everybody heard, you are my guy for websites. So um, we there's things that you've done for me and you've done for other people that I think would be really helpful here. Uh, I used to call it, what was it, Google My Business, but it's not called that anymore. And then SEO, and these are things you've done for my website and for me. By the way, just got my 60th Google review on my Google business page or whatever it's called now, which you will fill us in and tell us tell us what it is called. Well, that, that's, a, that, I mean, that, that, that's a good story in itself, how you decided to do that. You just sent out an email saying, I, I, I realize I don't have uh, reviews on my Google business profile. And all of a sudden, the floodgates came in. Right. So the story on that is you said you should have your Google business profile filled out. And I was like, okay, guy, <laughs> help, <laughs> help me here. So you set me up with that. And then Google sent me an email and said, Hey, you don't, you don't have any reviews. And if you get at least five, you'll show up more in searches. And as people know, if you listen to the podcast, SEO is not important to me. It's important. It's not important to me for getting business. It is important for findability. And when you did the SEO on my website and changed all my title tags and, and all the things there, it definitely helped. Um, but in terms of reviews, I used to have them on my website on a page. And like we know, nobody looks at those pages. That's why they're on every page of my site. And I sent an email out and said, hey, would you be one of my five? I sent it to like 900 people. Would you be one of my five? Google says I need five. And within two days, I had 36. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and now I send people there. I have all these redirects, reviewallenberg.com, reviewmyspeaking.com, et cetera. And I, like I said, I just got from a mastermind the other day, my 60th, they're all five-star. Um, although I know it legitimizes if one of them is not, but thank you for making them all five-star. <laughs> you keep them all at five-star and I'll do the same on my profile. I, exactly. have, about, I have about 40. So There you go. There you go. Uh, and, and like we know, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So ask people to do it. So let's start with that. Uh, it was Google My Business. It's not called Google My Business anymore. So give, for people who don't even know what we're talking about here, what is this? There are three different ways that you're able to show up on Google. One is that you can pay. You can pay Google to come up on the top of the page for any keyword term. And, and it's, uh, it's almost like an auction. The more, you know, the more you bid, the more, the, the higher that you can come up. And it's something that is very short lived. It, it just, as long as you're paying, you can come up on top. So the, for the long term of any business, you want to, to come up 24 seven without paying. Okay. And there's two ways to do that. One is all of the organic searches that come down, sim that have a description of the business and the website and that, and anybody in the world could rank for any keyword term that they want. If you're a wedding photographer in Chicago, there are many websites that rank for that term that are not wedding photographers in Chicago. They have the right strategy. Uh, I mean, for example, there's nobody in the world that does, in the wedding world that does it better than Wedding Wire and the Knot. They, if you search for every keyword term that a wedding couple would search to find a local vendor, the chances are wedding wire and the knot are right on the top of the search engine. Because what they're looking to do is, is take a couple that's looking for a wedding vendor in their area, and instead of continuing the search on Google, they're bringing them to their platform to deliver them to their advertisers. And for, and for those pe people that don't know, there's a team of data scientists at The Knot that are working on this all the time for The Knot and Wedding Wire, because the algorithm, I think since we've been talking now, the algorithm has changed again, right? It, keep, it, keep, it keeps changing. And there, I mean, the, wedding, the Knot gets about 10 million visitors to their site a month. Uh, it's incredible. And without this traffic from Google, 
they're they're not getting a lot a lot of that's coming from Google, and that's why SEO is so important. But the quest to rank on Google for a local wedding vendor is is complicated because anybody could rank for those terms with the right of SEO approach. And, and what you're so, talking about is on your own website having words and phrases that Google can read your site called indexing so that when someone does a search, you'll come up, right? Yes. I mean, that's, that's the pathway, but what anybody can do it. Any, like right. any other business, even if it, for a local vendor, that's not a local vendor can do it. But the third pathway formerly called Google, my business now called Google business profile, uh, and in, in reality, it's coming up on, on the Google Maps results, mm -hmm. is strictly for local businesses. You have to be a local business in order to be on that directory. Okay. So that, that's probably the best opportunity for a local wedding business, regardless of the category, to have success. Because they, a lot, they're only competing with other local competition. They're not competing with all of those other platforms that have a lot more resources to invest in finding out what, are the, what the best approaches are. And it, there's also more that an individual wedding business can do themselves to take charge of improving their uh, visibility on that platform. Okay, so this is tied into Google Maps, yet yes. I and many, many people don't want your physical address listed on there. So how does that work if it's tied to Google Maps? So Google knows you're local because you have to get, I, I guess I gave them my address, right? But said don't list it? That's correct. You have the ability to hide your address on, on your profile. So okay. Google has to have some sort of map marker to know the reality of where you're from, but it doesn't need to be seen by the public. And look, besides wedding venues and, and bridal shops at the, 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 and formal wear, a lot of the wedding vendor categories are service businesses that are not are going to their destination, wedding, right. ceremony, reception, Right. And they're delivering things and they're and they're performing there and they're they're photographing there. So you have an ability on Google business profile on your own to, to define your coverage oh, good. that, that you, you will have the of course, the, the more local that you're the more local you are to where you're located, the, that certainly is the best opportunity to rank. But. Google understands that as a service area business, that if if you're not living in Chicago, but but you, you're about 25 minutes away in a suburb, and you serve that area, Google understands that for a service area business, that's a viable search result for someone that's looking for wedding vendors in Chicago, even though they're not physically located in physical Chicago. Right, they're outside the loop, but then they go down to right. downtown. But what if you service more than one area, like more than one city, complete city, like you service Chicago and Miami? There, there, if you serve those areas, it would be to the big, biggest advantage to have some sort of location in that particular area that you can tell Google right. that you'd be able to receive mail. The way, mm -hmm. There's a certain validation process that to, for Google to ascertain you are where you say you are, especially if you're a home-based business that wants to hide their ad, the, the address, Google mm -hmm. will send you, needs to send you a postcard mm -hmm. with a confirmation number that you'll need to type in to show that you are you, you really are where you are. So, so if you had a uh, if you had a post office box or one of those like UPS stores have mailboxes there, that kind of an address where you receive no, mail? No, no. You see, Google is smarter than that. They're, okay. They're, they're really looking for people that actually have locations. But one of, the, one of the, the things that I've suggested to wedding vendors in the past is that you could have, you could look for a physical location without the retail headaches of having like a retail store. Like you, you could look for say a bridal store or another wedding vendor that might be willing to rent you 
space or rent you the opportunity to have a mailing address or a place where, you, where Google could establish you as a physical location. And, that, and that's also a really good strategy for th those vendors that are in the suburbs of a city that they want to rank for to where they really don't have a physical location that people are visiting, but they want to, if, if you're located in the physical city that you want to rank for, that's a big advantage. Okay. So, so, so you, if you're, you can, if your aunt Sally lives in Miami, that's a physical address. They'll, that postcard would go to Aunt Sally's house. They wouldn't know it's your Aunt Sally. Correct. Okay. So Aunt but Sally I would, is better. I would, love, I would love it to be Aunt Sally's bridal store. Right. <laughs> so well, but, that, but that's, they, where... Right. And then a good solution would be you're partnering. You know, let them use your address in the other town so they, sh they can show that they're there and you use their address. And now you're both going to get advantage. Right. And we're, and both of us, uh, clients of mine, clients of yours, uh, Summer and and Stephen Gossett, Gossett from yeah. and also I have uh, Jeff Party Machine. Mm -hmm. They they share a, a common space, right? That 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 everybody that's located that pays to be in that space could use that for a Google Business Profile address in uh, in Greenville, South Carolina. And I think that's actually a great idea among wedding vendors in a particular larger city to, to, to commonly rent a small space. Well, we used to, to call to those uh, wedding centers or uh, right. Sheree, Sheree Ronning had the wedding lounge was the right. same type of thing. That, no, that's always been a good idea because everybody that's working from home now has a physical space to go to. It looks more legitimate, more professional. Yeah, absolutely. More, more and it's not Starbucks. Sure. <laughs> it's not right. Starbucks, right? Right, so, right. So what would it, what would someone want to do, or can someone do this themselves? I know you did this for me, and you did this for your clients. Um, can someone do some of this themselves, or all of this? Yes, themselves? no. There's a lot. There's a lot that a, that a, a business can do. That, I, most most of the wedding vendors that I speak to already have a Google business profile already established, and many times they if they didn't establish it just from the awareness that that they exist, Google will establish one for them. Okay. But what, what they would then need to do is what's called claiming it, where they have to prove that, that they click onto a certain process on Google that helps Google determine that yes, you are the, you, you deserve to be given the access to take over the management of this profile. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of different uh, aspects to the, to the, what you can have on Google Business Profile. It has a lot of different types of information, uh, where you, the areas that you serve, there's different categories of types of services that you provide, uh, a, descript, a good description that to, to help people that see it on Google. And that's why it's, it's a more visible search result than the typical other one, even better than Google AdWords because Google AdWords results look the same as the rest of the listings. Google business profile, if you can come up to one of the top three results on that, on Google Maps for your area, you, you get homepage exposure for, for searches. Once it's very easy for someone to see those three prominent listings one after another, because you get, you see a map and you see reviews. So it really pops. And then there's a very easy call to action to then look at more search results on Google Maps. So you click on and then you see all the listings. And like I have a, I have a client in Michigan that's a venue that is like ranking number four, number seven for all these different Michigan venue searches. Mm -hmm. So I, I, the difference between going from number four to number three is, is, is amazing because right now they're not on, they're not on the homepage, the, the, the first page of Google for all searches for Michigan with, with that term, but if they were number th with number three, they would be. So okay. there, there's a lot. There's a lot to gain depending on where people are ranking at the present time. But so, like getting back to your getting back to your uh, question, so there's a, it's it's a very easy pathway for a business to populate their own Google business profile. Uh, there's fields that you fill out. There's a control panel that you have access to. It used to be 
that you would have that you would go on to a separate website like a w- web page and and fill it out there you actually now go on to your google business p- profile that you see actually on google when you're doing a search and it says you manage your own this account and you click on and this and the control panel is right on google well, but what if it's not there? Because uh, some people it shows up just because of the activity you've had. What if you're a newer business and it's not there? How do you make that, it show that, up? That you, you, what you would do is go, you would just search for Google business profile. It, it would give you a link and you would go, you would, you could, you would then go to fill out all of the information needed to set up the profile. The first thing that you do need to have is a, is a Gmail address okay. in order, in order to be able to, uh, start a Google business profile. Okay. And so the data, the information that's there is your, obviously your contact information, which you can hide the address if you want to. I think I have products, I think is one of mine. So my books are there. Um, is, is it pulling in? You said reviews, it's pulling in there. It actually, it, besides the reviews that you could directly have clients review yeah. you there, mm-hmm. it also pulls in, other review platforms and often you'll see wedding wire and not reviews and uh and facebook mm-hmm. they're not going to do yelp because it's direct direct it's competitive. competitive what about right. um what about my podcast because i know it's on google podcast although not nobody listens to it there uh they're mostly on apple and stuff it, can it or does it pull that in i don't i never looked at that no, I, I can't say that I have either. We'll have to, we'll have to look, explore that have together. To look into that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's like two, two people a month listen on Google. Most people listen on Apple or Spotify right. or YouTube. Right. Okay. So what are some of the strategies that people can do to try to rank higher? You said this ven- venue is fourth to seventh and they want to get into that top three. So okay. what are you so, hoping? So, so, so number one, believe it or not, it's, it's, it's completing all of the fields in the Google business profile, even though some of them don't really have much value to the user experience. On Google business profile, there's actually an option to create a Google business website. And it really, what it really is, it's not designing a website. It's actually, they actually pull and create a generic page from all the information that you give them. And it becomes uh, like a little, a little landing page. And actually for uh, a business that's just getting started that doesn't have a website, they can theoretically use a Google business website before they get a regular website. We, of, so course, it's, reco- it's we of course recommend they talk to you and get a real website, but. Oh yeah. But, <laughs> but you know, the, 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 but just right at the very beginning. Uh, okay. And there are also Google also has a very interesting feature that is mostly a consumer feature called questions and answers. Okay. And that is supposedly supposed to be a consumer driven uh, characteristic where a, 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 a consumer could go on and ask questions and then the, the owner of the or manager of the profile could, could deliver the answer and it gets posted on, on, on their profile. But you could actually create the questions and answers yourself by asking yourself the questions using a different Gmail address. Okay. And then, and then, and then come, and then come on and give the answer into your profile. So what, so what ends up happening is you see like seven or eight questions that someone can click onto and you can control the questions that are relevant to helping them better get to understand your brand. So almost your own curated FAQs. That's so correct. This, so it kind of sounds like Quora where People go on and ask questions and other people answer the questions, but it's Google's version, I guess, of Quora. Yes, yes. But in this case, you're, uh, you, you can be the asker and the answer. Ask and the answer. <laughs> right. Okay. And, right. So, and, then, and, then, and then the other, the other elements that are really important is sharing imagery and sharing videos. What most people don't understand is that when you're populating your profile with images and videos, it's great to, to create a very nice showing of your business by curating the right videos and photographs. But for, from a Google perspective, they're looking for you to constantly be updating those. So doing it like once or twice a year is good for the user experience. So you have you know, more current things to show, but Google is really looking for you to, to interact with their profile, similar to the way that you would interact with a social media profile. Okay. And in fact, you can actually use the same posts that you have on Facebook or Instagram and just repurpose them on Google. Just 
Google likes to see that you're tending to their platform. And also reviews are really important. Yeah. Review when you get a when you get a review on Wedding Wire or the Knot, it's great. I mean, you, the more the more reviews you get, the you know the, the better it is. Mm -hmm. But the whole thought process and strategy for re review review acquisition should be thought about in the with the mindset of you shouldn't have all your eggs in one basket. If you have a, if you have a hundred reviews on Wedding Wire, and you have twenty more reviews. 20, the next 20 clients that you're looking, if you want to get one review platform to get them to review you on, if you have only 10 reviews on Google and th mm -hmm. those next 20 that got on to would make it 30 is going to mean a lot more than getting going from 100 to 120. Because essentially, when you're looking at a preview of your Google business profile, if you're looking on a preview on Wedding Wire and the Knot, there's, there's a, the, the, the profile is really where they get the meat of who you are, but the prof, the profile, the preview doesn't show them a lot. It shows them an image. It shows them the, the main thing is the, how many reviews you have compared to your competitors. And recency you, and, and the yes. recency of them. Right. And of course the quality. I mean, if the, 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 right. the, the, how, 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 how high the reviews are. All right. Well, but so in general, a, let, let me ask you a question then. Okay. Cause, cause, We've been told that having the same review on more than one site is not good, but if somebody posted a great review for you on Wedding Wire, and you asked them to copy and paste it over to Google, is that going to help you or hurt you? I what I what I what I would do is I would copy it, tweak it a little bit so it's a little bit different, and and then and send it to them to paste it on so it's not exactly the same. Okay. And, how, and then how, how different? <laughs> just a little bit different. Okay. But that, but there's another strategy and this is like, I mean, that's why we're here, right? Right. I'm sharing with, we're talking shop. We're talking so shop. So this is, this, this is a strategy that is a really cool thing. It, with, with some of the people that you have a close, like some of the wedding vendors that may have a, a really good relationship with some of the people where they know they're going to get support and that, that they love them. If you could, create a sentence in the in the in their review that you could say to them please use that has the keywords in it mm -hmm. like for example when i you know when i was shopping for a wedding photographer in chicago i you know i, I saw a lot of nice work but nobody had the personality of x right. of xyz and that really meant a lot to me mm -hmm. to really have to really be comfortable with someone and did they take care of my not only the doing a great job of photography, but they were so wonderful to my grandmother and the guests, right. you know, something <laughs> like that. But you're organically bringing in right. a, a keyword term that makes sense. It doesn't look like it's forced. Right. Which if you look in your real reviews, couples do this on their own, but you're doing what the, the TV show is called leading the witness by asking yes. to say it a certain way. What I Correct. found is that if you, the way you ask the question, is the way they answer it. So if you say, could you post a review for us about how you really enjoyed our, our, our wedding photography in Chicago for your wedding? That's probably what they're going to say. <laughs> right. But if, but if, but if you can get some of those keywords in, that's like, that's almost like a, a social signal that Google is picking up that someone from the outside right. is acknowledging them for that search term. And, mm -hmm. and the other thing also is that I mentioned a little bit earlier that adding images and videos on a regular basis is a really is a really good thing that Google values. They also value if clients up, upload images to your Google business profile, which they can do. Because okay. it, again, it's showing engagement, it's showing interaction with your profile. And that it's, it's like a popularity contest. Right. So if you did video testimonials, you could upload them. If you somehow could ask them to just do a little one minute video and they upload that that's yes, stronger. that's exactly yeah. it's stronger yeah, from it's a, Google's from Google's vantage point than because than doing it yourself. Right. It's a testimonial and uploaded by the customer. So that's stronger Correct. than you upload you uploading anything. Right. right. Exactly. So so what, what are some other uh, tips on how to get more reviews? I think that I know that it's that it 
it's 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 really being uh, consistent that you that you have to just be consistent and persistent. Uh, make it you know. For, first of all, another thing is that it isn't like you want to all of a sudden. If you did a hundred weddings last year, then you haven't asked him for reviews. Don't do what Alan did. Alan, Alan, <laughs> Alan, Alan doesn't really care about SEO. He has enough. Everybody that's listening already knows he has enough going for him, but he doesn't need, he doesn't really need to be found on Google. But if you want to be found on Google, it's much better to have to get a few reviews a month. Like if you, if you, rather than getting 30 all at one time, if you have hardly any reviews, get that first surge of reviews just to make your review quantity respectable. But after that, you want to continually get reviews. And another thing that many wedding vendors don't realize is that you don't have to limit the review outreach to just clients. Hmm. Uh, you could you could ask other vendors. Guests. Uh, guests. Parents. And you could all and you yeah and you could also even ask clients to review you about the experience of working together at the beginning. What, what about, um, yeah, I said other vendors, right? So the other yes. people that you work with all the time, peer reviews. Oh yeah. yeah. I, th I think those have a tremendous amount of credibility. And uh, you can do that for you... each other. So you're helping each yes, other. Exactly. I've heard, I've heard that if you at least get into double digits, so like initially, yeah, you don't want to dump like, I only asked for five and got 36. I wasn't right. trying to get 36. Right. But if you can get into that double digits quickly, I think there's more credibility at 11 versus eight. Yes. Yes. And, but also you, you want to be, you, you want to look at who you're competing with. Yeah. Yep. And if, especially, especially on, you know, wedding wire and the knot, you definitely want to, uh, to have, you know, you want to be competitive because someone will, if someone, if you have 30 reviews and everybody else has over a hundred, chances are you're, you're going to be clicked on less than, than your competitors. And then for wedding wire and the knot, you need like at least five new reviews in the year, good good reviews to qualify for best of weddings and yes. uh, and, and couples choice. So, like Brian said, if you're if you're already getting thirty reviews on your wedding wire profile, direct people over to Google to get get over there because you should have more than enough to get your best of or couples choice. Right, and that and it also the one thing about getting reviews on Google is besides the credibility of it, it actually could help advance your ranking. Tell people what ranking is. You've used that word a bunch of times. What is sure, ranking? Sorry. So rank, ranking is that when it's really just a, an assessment when you ser type in search terms like wedding venue in Michigan, mm -hmm. you see what number you rank on Google. So the idea is, is the higher that you rank, the better it is. It, it actually has a number or, or it's just what page you're on? It's really, it's to me, what the way that we look at it, it's, it's the, it's, you're, you're ranking number four on Google for on, on Google maps, you're number four, you might be number eight or nine organically for a client. That's, that's really like, we have a, we have a, uh, a DJ company, Bun DJ company, which has six, lo six locations across the country. And we do, we, we've done their website and do all their SEO. They, they rank both on Google business profile, Google maps and organically very high, but they're going to rank higher on Google business profile because they're not competing again, wedding wire, all the other platforms are not there. So if they're ranking on the, at least on the first page of Google, uh, even though it might not be number two, number three, it's still really good. So you have to manage your expectations. And also just in general, when you're a newer business, it's going to take time. Yeah. Businesses, businesses develop a lot of different types of exposure. Just naturally, even if they do nothing, they get links from other, like a lot of, say, a wedding vendor writes a blog post on, on a wedding that they did. Often they will include other vendors that were part of the wedding and give them a link to their website. That is another very important element in advancing your ranking is that is the more backlinks that you get links to your website. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that Google values. And, and one of the easiest ways to acquire backlinks, as Alan mentioned earlier, is to try to 
network with other vendors in your area, do blog posts on each other, things like that. But also, interesting enough, if you searched for your business on Google to see places that you were included in a blog post, you'd be surprised how many might not might have your name but not linkings to your site. And if you just contacted them and just asked them to please add a link, uh, a lot of them will accommodate you. They just, they, they just didn't think about it. Right. So if you were going to search for yourself – because you've already probably searched for yourself on your computer. Should you use a private viewing or incognito window when you do that search? Does that take away all the history to give you what other people would see? Or does that matter? Oh, no, no, it doesn't matter. No, okay. you can just search. You can just search yourself and it'll just list all the results. It, what it, where it does matter is if you were searching for a search term, you would probably come up higher when you're searching it than another consumer yeah. that hasn't searched for you before because Google factors in your behavior. Right. Okay. So then um, on your own website, this is on, on your Google business profile. The, it knows where you are, but you didn't list your address. I've noticed recently, I was frustrated again the other day. I had this list of people that I was contacting with and I wanted to go to their websites to see where they were. And first of all, half of them were using a Gmail address. So I didn't even know what their website was. <laughs> And then when I went to their websites and found their websites, a lot of them listed no location information because, again, they don't want people coming to their house. So how do you overcome that on your own website? Because that'll help your SEO, right? That'll rank higher. But if you don't say you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have to uh, include your address and you could actually get a, a Google map. I, so like a little graphic that you can download from Google that will, will just – pinpoint the area that you're located in it has nothing to do with the address but, but the but more it, more ahead. terms you use like i work in this city that city i like to put it on the reviews to say this couple got married at this venue in this city and state so at least you say those things but yes, gosh, Brian, yes i'm looking that, at these that, sites that all, i didn't know where they were <laughs> yes that, i mean it's real it's really important uh, also from a user experience right when someone comes to your website they need to know right away what you do and where you do it Right. In so the words that they would use. So like in North right. Carolina with Joe Bunn, the triangle, the triad, stuff like that. You can't just say Raleigh and Charlotte. You need to say the triad and the triangle because that's how they might search for you. I'm looking right. for a wedding and, and, DJ and, and the triad. And, and all of that is a science. You could yeah. actually search. There, there's reporting tools that we use professionally that will tell us how many times a month a particular search term is used, is searched. Right. And, and you'd be surprised, like someone, like people are getting, I'm sure I've gotten solicitations. Well, we'll get you on the first page of Google. <laughs> it doesn't matter if nobody's searching that way. It's right. all it is is satisfaction. And, and I, it's amazing how many people I've spoken to tell me, well, I'm doing great with my SEO. I rank, for, I'm on top of Google for my small town with a thousand people. Right. Well, what, what Brian is saying is you see billboards, you get emails and stuff. We'll put you on page one. They will for a phrase that nobody ever uses. So every time you search the phrase, of course, you're number one because nobody, nobody searches that. So this is because we're, we're, we're running long on time here. So this is one of the things that you do for people. What are some of the things you do to help you? Because you're my guy. You're, you're who I recommend for all of this kind of stuff. So what are the things that, that you do? BrianLawrence.com. So one of the things that things that we do include getting backlinks, uh, getting backlinks with an industry focus is something that a generic firm can't do. I know a lot of bloggers. I know different places where I can get backlinks. Usually a, a web a, a, a SEO company will usually almost cold call a lot of different sources saying that I'll write an article for your website as long as you give me a link. And you're okay. paying a lot of money for the time that they're spending to try to get a link. Right. We also do blog posts. There are many people think about blog posts as a resource to expand on the user experience when someone comes to the website. And probably for wedding vendors, one of the best strategies of, of types of blog posts are real weddings, mm -hmm. having, having the imagery and having the real feel of an actual wedding. But mm -hmm. from a, from a, an SEO perspective, it's using blog blog posts that try to rank for a particular keyword that maybe the other pages aren't to try to bring people to the site. 
For example, uh, one of the one of the strategies we use for none venues is we'll do an ongoing blog post of different to different venues that a particular vendor likes. Like our friend Jim Collins, yeah, uh, from Collins Entertainment in Connecticut. If you search for unique wedding venues in CT, Connecticut, which is searched a few hundred times a month, you'll find him his blog post that we did for him right on top of Google. Right. So what that does is it brings people to a site that are getting married. So we using, try to so using the terms they use. So you do if people didn't realize this from our last one, you you make websites, you make great wedding websites. Brian's been in the wedding industry for a long time. So unlike somebody who just makes websites, he makes websites for the wedding industry. So it is a focus. Same thing here with the blog post. I recommend the two customers the, the other day for doing blogs because of this. Right. You can help them set up their Google business profile, let them know what's, if they've done it already, how to complete it, fill it out, what to do, updating on that, help with their ranking, uh, reviews. Uh, did I miss anything? There's also <laughs> a very important thing that a lot of businesses don't realize is that they could be doing things that they think are working that should be working for them with their doing their own SEO from their own research. But sometimes there's a bunch of different technical things that are going on behind the scenes of their website that they don't realize that are creating a disconnect with Google. A couple of those things could be certain imagery of videos that need to be optimized for speed because Google likes a, a faster loading site. Sometimes it could that most people that have been in the industry for a while have had an older website and then got a newer website. And a lot of web designers don't understand all of the due diligence that should be done when going from one website to another. Sometimes pages don't get carried over properly mm -hmm. from an old website and there are remaining old website pages that don't go anywhere anymore. And it, it's called a broken link. And some of those are things that are negatives on Google. Okay. And, and, those, and those things, if those, once those things are corrected, it opens up pathways to make it easier to rank on Google. We install what's called schema, which is a, a language that helps Google better identify a business from locality. So there's a bunch of things that, like my approach for SEO is really a hybrid approach. I will do certain things that a wedding vendor can't do but I will empower them and instruct them to be able to do things to help themselves at the same time. Okay. So brianlawrence.com, it's going to be in the, uh, in the show notes. You are Brian at brianlawrence.com, just like you should be not Gmail or something like that. Thank you very much. Uh, you are my guy. You will always be my guy. If you were at the wedding MBA, you saw him standing next to me in my booth over there because he, he's my guy. So uh, whether it's a new website, Google business profile, SEO, blogging, ranking, all of these things. You want to reach out to Brian and uh, you will do an assessment for them, right, Brian? You, you, oh, you can yes. charge them uh, from day one. So if they need I've, an absolutely. assessment. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, my goal is to speak to whoever was interested in speaking to me. And just like you, Alan, you're so generous with your information. Like you don't hold anything back. If someone has a question, you give them an answer. They, they will learn something that could help their business, whether we do business or not. I don't do business with everybody that I speak to, but I want right. to make an impression and be a reflection of anybody that you recommend to me uh, of how you would handle people. Well, thank you for joining me here again and generous with your time. We'll have it in the show notes, all the links over there. Uh, you could also find him if you Google Brian Lawrence, because I'm sure he will show up pretty highly. There's a lot, there's a lot of Brian Lawrence's, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty up there for the Brian Lawrence. Uh, good. Just like Alan Berg, you get the, the dead radio DJ when you Google me still, <laughs> I, I can't compete I, with the, that. My, the Brian Lawrence, one of the Brian Lawrence I found was like an ax murderer. <laughs> oh, there you go. We're in the same boat. Yours is right. the killer. Mine, mine got killed. There you go. All right. Well, uh, thank you for joining me. I'll have it in the show notes there, everybody. And if you have any questions for Brian, you can reach out directly to him, Brian at brianlawrence.com and we will see you on the next episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. If you liked it, please subscribe to this channel and post a review on your chosen platform, Apple Podcasts or whichever one. If you have any questions about anything in this episode or any of my episodes, email me directly at alan at weddingbusinesssolutions.com or visit my website, allenberg.com.
A-L-A-N-B-E-R-G.com. A-L-A-N-B-E-R-G.com. If you have any suggestions for future topics or guests that you'd like to see, please again, email me or visit my website. Thanks for listening.